Hi, I'm Bob. We will explore sample selection today. We will learn how to follow Hackman's two-step procedure to alleviate the endogenous sample selection bias in Stata. Sample selection bias happens when the estimation sample cannot represent the entire population we are interested in. A classic example in the Eclometrics textbooks is the women's wage equation. We regress the women's wage on their educational attainment and other explanatory variables and estimate the return to education for women. However, some women did not work when the data were collected. We have wage data for the women who were employed and had earnings. We do not have wage data for the women who were unemployed at the time of the survey conducted. We call this the selected sample because the sample contains women who were self-selected into the workforce. Would the selected sample bias the OLS estimates? If we are only interested in the return to education for the employed women, then the OLS estimate is OK. On the other hand, if we want to make inferences about the relationship between wages and education for all the women of prime working age, including the employed and the unemployed, then the estimates could be biased. However, not all selected samples lead to biased OLS estimates. There were exogenous and endogenous sample selections. If the sample is chosen on the basis of exogenous explanatory variables in the model, it belongs to exogenous sample selection, and it will not cause biased estimates because we control for the selection variables in the model. The situation is very different when the selection is based on the outcome variable. It's usually an example of the endogenous sample selection. We can see the women's wage equation as an example where the sample is based on the outcome variable wage because only those who receive positive wage offers are in the sample. The name endogenous sample selection comes from the fact that the selection is based on some unobserved factors in the error term. We can think of the endogenous sample selection a special case of the omitted variable bias. The omitted variable is a selection variable. It could be the factor the selection is based on or the probability of the selection into the sample. In our women's wage equation, it could be the probability of being selected into the labor force. When endogenous sample selection occurs, we need to do the sample selection corrections. The bias caused by the selected sample is called sample selection bias. It's also called the self-selection bias because only the women themselves who choose to work are in the sample. We follow Hackman's two-step procedure to alleviate the sample selection bias. In the first step, using the entire sample, including employed and unemployed women, estimate a probit model of whether the woman was employed and then obtain the inverse Mills ratio or the predicted working probability for each observation. In the second step, using the selected sample, the employed women in our example, run the regression of wages on education 
other control variables, and the inverse mu ratio. The idea of the Hackman two stack procedure is that we controlled for the sample selection bias by adding an additional selection variable to the model, and therefore obtain a consistent estimate. Should we use extra explanatory variables in the first step selection regression? The prediction from the selection regression. Is a function of the explanatory variables in the first step. If the explanatory variables in the second step outcome regression are the same as those in the first step selection regression, then the inverse mu ratio or the predicted probability of working will be highly correlated or severely collinear with the explanatory variables in the outcome regression. It leads to large standard errors and imprecise estimates of the coefficients. Therefore, it is better to have extra regressors in the first step selection regression to avoid the multicollinearity problem. Let me show you how to do Hackman's two-step procedure in Stata. Please download the dataset from the link below. It is from the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. We see data on married women's hourly wages, work experience, and race. We also have information on the husband's income and demographics. We use the tabulate command to find categories of the dummy variable labor force participation. Of five thousand six hundred and thirty-four married women in the sample, three thousand two hundred and eighty-six are in the workforce or working. We first estimate the return to education by OLS. We use the regress command. The outcome variable is the log of hourly wage. The explanatory variables include education, experience, its squared term, and race dummy variables. Since there is no wage data for women not in the labor force, the wage equation only contains data for the three thousand two hundred and eighty-six working women. The OLS estimate implies that. One more year of education increases married women's wages by nine point nine percent on average, holding other factors constant. We store the results using the estimates store command. Next, we manually do Hackman's two-step procedure. In the first step, we estimate the probit selection equation. The variable labor force participation equals one if the woman was working. We type probit in the labor force, and a list of explanatory variables that affect women's choice of work, including all the variables in the wage equation, education, experience, and race. We add two additional explanatory variables. Whether having children less than six years old, and long wife income, to the selection regression. Then we can generate the predictive values by typing predict in the labor force head, comma x b. We compute the inverse mu ratio, lambda head. The inverse mu ratio is defined as the ratio of the standard normal density of the fitting value, divided by the standard normal cumulative distribution function of the fitting value. We use the predict command and xb option to obtain the fitting values. We name it labor force participation head, and then compute the inverse mu ratio for each observation. Notice that the two additional explanatory variables have the 
expertise, more long life income, and more young children will reduce the women's probability of working. Both are statistically significant at the one percent level. In the second step, we include the inverse mu ratio as an additional explanatory variable in the wage regression. After this sample selection correction, the estimate becomes slightly larger. One more year of schooling increases wages by about ten point three percent on average. After holding other variables in the model fixed and correcting the sample selection bias, the return to education is statistically significant at the one percent level. The estimated coefficient on lambda hat is significantly different from zero at the ten percent level. It is evidence of the presence of sample selection bias. We store the estimates and use the S tab command to list the estimates from ORS and Hagman's method. It gives us a clear comparison between the two estimation methods. In Stata, we can use the Hagman command to make the sample selection corrections instead of manually doing it. We type Hagman, followed by the wage equation. After the comma, we write the option select, and put the selection equation into the parentheses. We use the two-step option to specify the Hagman two-step procedure. And the mu's option to store the inverse mu ratio. The results are identical to the two-step estimates by hand. We can verify that the inverse mu ratios. Computed from this command, and those by hand are also identical. An equivalent way to perform the Hagman two-step correction is to compute the predicted probability of working from the selection regression, and then include the predicted probability in the wage regression. It produces similar results. It is equivalent to using the inverse mu ratio because the inverse mu ratio is negatively related to the probability of selection into the sample, which is the probability of selection into the labor force in our case. We can compare all the estimates in a table. We have used the estimate store command to store the estimates for each model. Now we use the S tab command to list the estimates in the table. Adding the inverse mu ratio does not change the coefficients in important ways. The return to education increases slightly from 0.099 to 0.103 after sample selection corrections, but the difference is not substantial. We remember that the inverse mu ratio in the wage equation is only significant at the ten percent level, but not significant at the one percent or five percent level. It implies that the sample selection bias is not severe. The ninety-five percent confidence interval of Hagman's two-step estimate for the return to education. Almost covers the 95% confidence interval of the OLS estimate. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next topic. Take care. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.